and welcome to GPTV on Tuesday, the 7th of September. My name is Philip Kingston. And I'm Gary Peer. And a big happy Father's Day to you, Phil, for uh, well, Sunday. Thank you very much. And straight back at you and to all the fathers out there and to all of the fathers that uh, are in people's memories and just to all people across the world, to all man and womankind, I hope everybody had a great Sunday. And a big uh, Shana Tova and Happy New Year to all of our Jewish friends and clients. Philip, a big day in the calendar, although uh, people will not be going to the House of Prayer, Phil, because uh, no, we won't have any of that in the state of Victoria. No, no, no. Well, a healthy, happy, peaceful and prosperous New Year to all. And certainly as we, uh, as we dip our apple into our honey, we've got to uh, always take stock, Gary, that if you're blessed, geographically blessed to have been born in Australia or have moved to Australia, uh, we, you really couldn't be in a better country of the world. Now, Phil, I've said Happy Father's Day, but you're looking at almost a bit grandfatherly with those glasses on. I think they, I don't know if they do much for your youth, although I must say, Phil, uh, you're not a grandfather yet, are you? I don't think that's happened in the, in the Kingston family. Is that, that's not quite there yet, is it? Well, I don't know, Gary. Maybe, maybe, maybe it is. Neither, <laughs> uh, neither of us actually know, but uh, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure I'm not. <laughs> uh, and now Edna has written in this week. Thank you, Edna, uh, who said that... Um, we're very young looking uh, presenters, Phil. I think Edna's just gone right up the charts to being our number one viewer. So Edna, uh, you are number, if we ever have a live studio audience, Edna, you'll be either on the stage or right in the front seat. So thanks very much for your feedback there, Edna. Uh, very, very kind of her to say. Uh, Phil, usually on GPTV, we've got towers, uh, we've got clearance rate. Oh, by, by the way, before I move on, Edna asked about any beauty secrets, Phil, any, any presentation or beauty secrets. Anything you'd like to share? With oh, us? absolutely! Uh, so, so I have I subscribe to uh, contrary to your constant sniping, uh, but I subscribe to a uh, to a completely natural approach to beauty care, Gary. The furthest I'll go, of course, is to a moisturizer in the morning after I've shaved. But uh, no, uh, stay out of the sun is my first beauty tip. Uh, the sun is really the most damaging. So, stay out of the sun, Edna, uh, and then of course. Eat a very good diet, and and my two go-to things, my two go-to foodstuffs, Gary, are blueberries or blueberries, as uh, as there's probably known, and broccoli. Eat a lot of blueberries, broccoli, and nuts. Basically, a plant-based diet. Which 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 nut? What's the nut du jour, Phil? What's the nut of the day? Well, I mean, all of the nuts are good, Gary. If you're worried about your prostate, and you should be, quite frankly, uh, but if you're worried about your prostate, Brazil nuts. So Brazil nuts are very good for the prostate. Um, almonds are a very good one. Uh, try and eat cashews, but eat them sparingly because they will put on those cashew COVID kilos. But mixed nuts, Gary. I'm that's mixed nuts and seeds, Edna. That's what you need in your diet. Uh, now, Phil, I was I was going to say, uh, you know, usually on GPTV, we've got the towers, we've got the clearance rates, we've got the medians, uh, we've got uh, all of the latest market stuff. But look, there's no towers, there's no median, there's no uh, clearance rates, there's no nothing, Phil. It's very quiet out there in the world of real estate. So uh, we would like to have you believe there's deals happening and there's Zoom auctions and there's so much happening, but the reality is... Uh, we've ground down to somewhat of a slow pace feel, but there is lots going to happen. Lots happening, lots coming up. And some well, I, 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 want to, I want to really just drill into this, Gary, because, you know, any agent that you may be having a conversation with, and when I say you, I'm talking about the viewers, if you're having a conversation with an agent that says, oh, business is great and we're selling so much and Zoom auctions and, you know, virtual inspections, um, Essentially, a load of BS. There is, there are some sales being made, and and uh, certainly we've got a block of land, Gary, with a with a a rundown old home on it, or where we're selling a property where the home might be good, but the but it's all about somebody buying it for its land content. We could list one and sell one of those within 24, 48 hours. But anything that really does res rely on the consumer physically walking through. There's, no, there's, there's absolutely nothing happening. Uh, and any agents that's telling you otherwise is really just giving you a whole lot of BS. Having said that, one thing that we are very busy, Gary, and, and viewers should take note, is that we are doing a lot of Zoom 
presentations in terms of getting our vendors ready to come to the market. So if you're thinking about selling a house, what our whole team is busy at the moment is having virtual presentations where we're getting our vendors to walk around the home with their cam with their camera and giving us a FaceTime tour of the home. And then we're plotting a, and, and charting a course for them post lockdown. So we've signed up a lot of options this way, Gary, and that's what's going to continue to happen until we come out of the first stage of lockdown where we're getting our properties ready for October, November, December. And here's a quick tip, Gary. Um, we're going to be auctioning across grand final weekend. We're going to be auctioning a, a, across the Melbourne Cup weekend. Uh, and I reckon we will be auctioning literally up until, you know, the day before Christmas Day. I'm also tipping that the market will bounce back really quickly, probably around the 7th of January, I reckon, uh, given the fact that, that, that it, it's pretty clear that none of us are going very far for the next three, four, five months. Uh, we're going to have a very busy October, November, December, and then a very busy January. Well, Phil, Melbourne, you know, looking like they're going to be in the grand final, perhaps or likely to win the grand final. Uh, the one year it happens, unfortunately, you won't be able to be there, but uh, I'm sure you'll have a lot of joy watching that, Phil. So I can't imagine there'll be any auctions on 5pm on Saturday, the 25th of September, Phil, because uh, that is going to be a very big, big day uh, in the calendar. Well, of the we don't know whether Melbourne will be there yet. I mean, we're going to have a very nervous, uh, I think it's Friday or Saturday night the game is. We're going to be very uh, nervously watching that. Uh, Geelong with their massive forward structure are looking like uh, they're going to bounce back pretty hard against us. So certainly, Gary, if we make it to the final, uh, there will be a very big sign up on our front gate. Uh, which is urging the Ds to go the distance. And uh, do you reckon you'll be able to restrain uh, Melbourne uh, supporters, the Melbourne base, from sort of going wild, driving their Range Rovers around the city, doing donuts fill with their uh, Melbourne scarves hanging out the windows? Do you think you'll be able to stop that happening? Because I've got to tell you, Phil, uh, there would be a lot of energy to release if you're a Melbourne supporter having waited this long to win a final. Well, Gary, you know, last, last flag was in 1964, um, so if you think that's a long time to wait for a flag, I totally agree with you. And Phil, uh, this is a bit sacrilegious to talk about having uh, auctions on the Melbourne Cup weekend. I'm not sure that I can uh, go with that. I'm OK on the Sunday, Phil, but Derby Day Saturday, you know, uh, having said that, Phil, my Derby hope uh, man of heart uh, ran on Sunday. It was very disappointing. Order of command, very disappointing. I have uh, definitely been uh, pounded in the racing. So I haven't given my usual tips on GPTV. And thankfully, those viewers that follow my horses uh, haven't heard me spruik them. So if you've backed them, well, I'm sorry. But uh, thankfully, uh, the, none of the restaurants are open. So uh, at least you can save the money that you would have spent celebrating at Flower Drum or whatever on the horse and uh, just stick with it for next time. Uh, Phil, I, I want to get back to property because uh, we are... Because it is a property show. Is that why you uh, get back well, to Well, it's supposed to be a property show. And I want to talk about what's on people's minds. Firstly, Phil, I just want to reiterate because some people look to this to get a bit of a, a roadmap and understanding about what's going on, Phil. So I just want to remind the viewers that on the 23rd of September, it has been decreed uh, by uh, His Excellency, uh, the Premier, Daniel Andrews, on the 23rd of September... Real estate agents may conduct one-on-one uh, -on -one inspections for homes that are vacant, Phil, in a COVID-safe, friendly way. Maybe there's some chance beforehand because in Sydney, uh, Lord knows, they are going for it. They are letting it rip. They are opening homes left, right and centre. But we've got to be a bit more patient, a bit more cautious, being Victorians, the protected species of Victorians that we are. Uh, Phil, people are wanting to know what is going on with homes that are tenanted or owner-occupied. Uh, we don't have a plan yet for that. Uh, so for those people that are curious, and I'm not looking to you for the answer because I know that uh, there's many things you can answer, but that's not one of the questions. But I guess uh, what I am saying is that I believe there will be uh, a solution uh, put forward. Now, the REIV, Phil, are very active. Uh, we might have a little bit of footage uh, going on here now while I'm talking as an overlay, Phil. Um, the REIV have been active, uh, encouraging all of the members of the real estate world and, and of course, uh, the real estate industry to go and get the jab. And we're encouraging everybody else to get the jab. So, Phil, you've had the two jabs now. You're fully well, Gary, I must say I've had the two jabs. I had the two AstraZeneca injections. I've got to tell you, Gary, it's been fantastic because my mobile phone reception is so much better as a result of having the uh, the 
the double jab. And of course, now um, I only have to look at my Microsoft computer and it just does the most amazing things for me. So look, there's a lot of advantages to getting the jab, Gary. One of them is that technological answer, but just get it done, get it done. You know, we're only going to open up as a society when we are at 70, 80 percent um, vaccination. And there's really the jab doesn't hurt. Uh, the science is pretty conclusive that it's uh, that it's not a problem. So just get it done. Well, that's the that's the exact theme of the promo, Phil. Get it done, uh, and that's what we're pushing, uh, of course, amongst our team, amongst our office, amongst the public uh, and the community. Phil, go and get it done, so we can all be out and about, so you can get back to auctions, Phil, doing what you do best, which is calling auctions, upsetting someone in the crowd, but getting great great prices and results for our clients. So. Um, Coffee van, by the way, I saw a coffee van out on the weekend, which I thought was interesting when I was doing my exercise. It was actually a coffee van. I think it said house it or something. So I don't know if that's a special South African coffee van. I don't know if there is a South African infiltrated coffee van in the community, but I did see one uh, on the weekend out and about, which I thought was curious. So uh, beware of cheap imitations. The GP. Well, we are looking forward to our coffee crew and our coffee vans coming back out, Gary. As, as soon as we hit that magic 70%, I think we'll just unleash our coffee vans out on the road serving our delicious coffee uh, which is done in conjunction with Las Chicas of course uh, because I think that we're all just so desperate aren't we just desperate to get back we're desperate to get back Phil we're desperate to get the coffee van back out I always love it when the coffee van gets out people get free coffee still find a way to complain about it I always enjoy that when the public uh, do that for us Phil but you know we're going to be back out there Phil and uh, now let's talk a little bit about property uh, firstly Phil I uh, well, we've got a couple of sales to go through, but before we do, or at least some offerings, I just want to say, Phil, that there are people out there and they're, they're thinking, hmm, September, it's getting on. People can't come through my home till the end of the month, 2021. It's getting long on the tooth. Should I put my sale plan off to 2022? Now, I've got my own ideas about the answer here, but I'm going to throw to you to see if we're on the same wavelength. Sell this year or just think maybe it's a bit too much, a bit too rushed. Let's put it off to next year. What does well, it mean? I don't see any reason to waste. The market is strong. And there's one thing that we've never been able, no one's got a crystal ball. No one can say, oh, we know what the market's going to be like in March or July of next year, just taking two, two quarters. So uh, what we do know is that there is strong demand out there at the moment. All of, all of, the, all of the factors that we look for uh, mean that the market will be strong. So why would you put it off? I mean, ultimately... If you put, if, if we're open for inspection on the 23rd and we can start getting people through, uh, then October is going to be busy. November is going to be busy. December is going to be busy. Now, November and December, really, if you look at that kind of seven weeks from the 1st of December through to just up until before Christmas Day, these are, these are always really busy, strong, active weeks. So I don't see any reason to put your decision into 2022 when you can get it done in 2021. Phil, I've got to say that, uh, you know, those people that watch this show, some think it's, you know, such a slick production that it's been rehearsed and thought through. But the reality is we just fly from the seat of our pants, Phil. Uh, and the reality is that uh, I agree with you. I agree with you, Phil. Uh, one thing we know for sure is there are so many buyers that are ready to go, Phil, right now. It's like this. It's like a bullpen that's just crowded. I'll give you a farm analogy, Phil. Like the days back in Cootamundra when you had that bullpen just full of sheep and as soon as the gate opens, they just run out. Well, I just, want, I just want to draw you up to one very serious point, Gary. We didn't release a pen of balls right. amongst the sheep. That's not actually... How it works, Gary. I wasn't paying Bull, much attention. To bull it. and sheep are not something that actually work together. Um, well, well, listen, uh, that's never been my thing, but I think you understand uh, the, co the if, concept. If what, if what you're trying to say, we, we're letting the bulls out amongst the cows, then that's a different story. So I think what you were trying to say is that there's a lot of pent up, frustrated tension amongst the buyers who are the bulls. And the cows are the houses that we have to sell. Is that is that what you're trying to say? Well, I just think there's a lot of buyers we need to get out and do something, Phil. Uh, and I'm not sure it'll be like that next year. It might be just as good. It might be better. I don't know. But one thing we do know, Phil, is we can have a look over the fence, the bull fence, sheep fence, gate, whatever you might call it, and we can see there's a lot of people 
buyers, not cheap or bulls, but buyers who are ready to get out and perform, Phil. Uh, you know, a lot of people have been, to use a, uh, a good Australian uh, analogy, Phil, if you use the Angels uh, as a uh, song, you know, a great band, you use their song, uh, we've got to get out of this place. I, I think a lot of buyers are feeling that. They're sitting at home listening to the Angels saying, we've got to get out of this place. If it's the last thing we ever do. There's people that are desperate to buy, to move, to get on with their lives, to get a study, to get something bigger, to get something smaller. And uh, of course, there's some husbands and wives that are looking at each other saying, am I ever going to see your face again? And for those that went to the Angels concerts, you would know what the response was uh, to that, Phil. Um, yes, Gary. Uh, I think we're just going to move on slightly and just yeah. bring it all back to why is there so much demand and is that demand going to go away? And, and I mentioned before that all of the factors that we look at, let's just talk about those factors, uh, low unemployment, low unemployment uh, or or static unemployment is one of our great barometers. Rising unemployment is generally the enemy of property prices, but we have static, in fact, falling unemployment. So there's the first factor that we look at. The second factor we look at is ease and access and, and price of money borrowings. Uh, still very easy to get an owner-occupied loan and certainly money is still cheap by historical standards. Uh, so that's the second factor. And then third factor is, of course, supply. So we've got low unemployment, we've got access to cheap money and we've got limited supply. These are the factors for any seller getting a price that is over and above their expectations. So whilst those factors remain there, Gary, there is absolutely no reason to put off the sale of your home to 2022 because who knows what happens in 2022? Who knows what happens to those factors? But also we could still have easy access to funds, we could still have low unemployment, but if you get a wave of people selling, then ultimately as an individual seller, your buyers are now having more choice, therefore, uh, th therefore there's not going to be a strong interest in each individual property. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, if I was selling a property now, uh, I would definitely, definitely put my property on the market knowing that in 2022 there'll probably be more choice. So be a seller in 2021 and be a buyer in 2022. Uh, I think so, Phil, although, you know, if you're a buyer you, and you see the right home now, you don't want to wait till next year, Phil, you want to go for it because uh, we've also found that, you know, you can't guarantee the supply uh, chain, Phil. It might be quiet next year with supply. Uh, but one thing we know is there's a lot of buy demand. There's a lot of people that want to buy who, uh, who are ready to go now, Phil. Maybe they'll pay more next year. Who knows? But uh, if you are going to sell... Uh, one thing we know is the buyers are out there. So I would think on that basis, I would not necessarily wait until next year. Phil, we've got a few properties to talk about as well. Um, before we go into what is scheduled for auction this week, because we don't know if they're going to go ahead or not, I want to draw your attention, Phil, to a property that you know and I know and we both love, and that's 32 Howard Road, Corfield North. Phil, what an amazing property this is. Coming back onto the market, Phil, uh, it was put on the market at some stage and then it was the vendor said, you know what, I'm going to hold on to a bit longer. Now they've let it go to the market. This is an extraordinary home. Tell us a bit about this masterpiece, Phil. Well, first of all, Gary, it's uh, on in excess of a thousand square meters of land and literally kind of almost in the center of Howard Road. And Howard Road is obviously the number one street of Caulfield North. Now, this is Ernest Fuchs and the late Mrs. Fuchs's house. So Ernest Fuchs, who was one of Australia's, in fact, probably Australia's preeminent post-war architect who revolutionised the way houses were built uh, from really the 50s onwards. Uh, this, is, this is their own house and it's a real showpiece, Gary. Uh, so whoever buys this is going to have to obviously look at reinterpreting the home. Um, there was a, a permit for this property to build a modern pavilion of four bedrooms and two bathrooms on the back. So it's really going to, somebody is going to just be rewarded for some for some deep understanding of how to take this home from really the 1960s and position it into the year 2021 and beyond. Uh, but it can be done, it can be done so well. It is a showpiece. It is going to be one of Melbourne's finest postmodernist homes once it's in the right hands and we're looking for that right buyer at the moment. Uh, no question about it, Phil, to be able to buy into how it rode at the sort of price point uh, of this home, and I think it's being suggested that there'll be interest there somewhere well into those uh, into the threes, Phil, and who knows what 
competition will take it beyond there. But uh, this really is an extraordinary property and uh, it's a kind of once in a lifetime opportunity. And I say that not just because of the street, but because of the rarity of that style of home. Look, uh, whoever, whoever buys that house, Gary, is really being given the, the crown jewels. And if they do the right thing by this home, uh, they will have a house that I think will outlive just about every other property that's ever been built in Caulfield. Yeah, including Howitt Road, which of course is home to some of the best, uh, finest, most exclusive and beautiful and of course expensive homes in uh, in Melbourne, let alone Caulfield North. Phil, we've got a great house, 73 Normanby Road. I just want to talk a bit about this home. Uh, we sold this some years ago. It's a really beautiful home in a great location. Uh, and of course, that got that fantastic period style where old and new come together so beautifully, Phil. This is a very spacious four bedroom uh, home on a, a nice parcel of land. Uh, four bedroom, two bathrooms, and uh, we're looking in somewhere in that sort of mid to high ones field for this one. So uh, I want to bring that one to the attention of the viewers as well, because I think it is one of the extraordinary offerings. Now, Phil, we do have some auctions scheduled for this weekend, but look, it doesn't look like uh, they're necessarily going to go ahead, but let's run through them very quickly anyway. Uh, on Saturday, Philip Warnack Road, Carnegie, a one bedroom apartment there, uh, one bedroom, one bathroom, great value. Uh, and that one's being handled by Dan Dyson from our uh, Carnegie office, Phil, one at 95 Kurugal Road uh, in Carnegie, Phil. Uh, we love it in and around Carnegie. Uh, this is a fantastic looking single level villa, Phil. Uh, two bedroom, one bathroom, but it's got uh, a double garage, which is a fantastic uh, rarity uh, in that area and in that price range. And the more Herskovitz has been uh, dealing with that one. Uh, Jeremy Rosen's due to auction it on Zoom, Phil. Uh, I don't know if Jeremy's done a Zoom auction yet, but it's high he time. He has, Gary. He has. has oh. Don't worry about him. Oh, good. I'm not. Would never worry about that. Uh, wonderful professional. Three A Kangaroo Road, Murrumbina. Phil will be hopping over there at some point in time. It's due to be auctioned this week, but possibly will be postponed. But still a great home to showcase. Uh, four bedrooms, two bathrooms, and two parking spaces in Murrumbina. Uh, Phil, I know that you have been working with this property in Rajol Parade. Uh, not probably going to be going to auction this Sunday, although due to. Uh, do you want to tell us a bit about that? Well, it's definitely not going to auction this weekend, but we may as well talk about it as we speak. This is a fabulous building on Riddell Parade, which is literally only metres from Glen Huntley Road. Literally, you've got the most fantastic views. You've got the most in incredible aspects right out over Elston Week, and you can walk to everywhere. You don't really do Whilst it comes with secure car parking, Gary, two bedrooms, two bathrooms, a study area, uh, you just don't need a car because you've got the train station, you've got the trams, you've got the buses, and you've got the incredible amenity of Glen Huntley Road, which I think has become one of Melbourne's best strip shopping centres. Yeah, I agree with that, Phil. Uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more. So much happening down there. Uh, it doesn't stop. Elston Week just keeps developing and emerging and improving. It's certainly one of the best uh, shopping centres in Melbourne. Melbourne, if not the best. Phil, I'm going to finish off with a, a home that I really have fallen quite in love with, been in the same hands for many years in a street that many people don't know about, Phil. That's Amelia Street in Caulfield South, and that's only because there's only a handful of houses there, but this is a classic Spanish Mission Art Deco-style home, Phil, um, and no one expects a Spanish Mission Art Deco-style home, as you would know, uh, for those people that... Uh, that know what I'm talking about. Uh, Phil, Four Amelia Street has got three bedrooms, one bathroom. It's got that beautiful deep timber, all of the classic period features, but also uh, it's on a fantastic block of landfill and it all orientates beautifully in the back towards the north. So uh, this is a home that's already had interest from people who want to live in, renovate, improve, pull down, uh, rebuild. Uh, so this is one that I just want to give people plenty of notice about, Phil, because we're excited about it for Amelia Street, Caulfield South. Now that's a big wrap on GPTV for uh, a week where there wasn't much happening in terms of sales and no boasting about uh, clearance rates or medians or anything else or uh, results. Uh, still much to talk about in the world of real estate, Phil. It never stops. Even when it stops, it doesn't stop. Does that make you know sense? what, Gary, it is the most popular subject, really. Uh, there is sex, politics, uh, religion and real estate. But I think out of those four, real estate sits right at the top uh, but this is the show that manages to combine all of those fascinating subjects whilst alienating only a small population of our dear viewership. Uh, so thank you for tuning in. Uh, it's always a pleasure, Gary, to see you on screen. It's always a pleasure to talk shop with you. But I do look forward to getting back into our display centre in Balaclava Road where we normally film, where we get to stand together 
uh, with only a bottle of sanitizer separating us. Yes, look forward to that, Phil. Shoulder to shoulder, side by side, sounding like a bit of a Collingwood supporter. Uh, happy spring to you, Phil, and uh, to all of our viewers, may it be a spring uh, that we all get to enjoy and get out and enjoy. Stay well, stay healthy, and have a wonderful week. Uh, looking forward to seeing you next week on GPTV. I'm Gary Peer. I'm Philip Kingston. Have a fantastic week.